Hi friends, and welcome to your daily devotional for Monday, April 12th, 2021. This week we are talking about joy. In the next few moments, I invite you to simply consider what joy means to you. Our word from the psalmist today comes from Psalm 135. We'll be reading verses 1 through 4 and then continuing on with 13 through 21. And this is from the New Revised Standard Version. Listen now for God's word to us. Praise the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Give praise, O servants of the Lord. You that stand in the house of the Lord in the courts of the house of our God. Praise the Lord, for the Lord is good. Sing to his name, for he is gracious. For the Lord has chosen Jacob for himself, Israel as his own possession. Your name, O Lord, endures forever. Your renown, O Lord, throughout all ages. For the Lord will vindicate his people and have compassion on his servants. The idols of the nations are silver and gold, the work of human hands. They have mouths, but they do not speak. They have eyes, but they do not see. They have ears, but they do not hear. And there is no breath in their mouths. Those who make them and all who trust them shall become like them. O house of Israel, bless the Lord. O house of Aaron, bless the Lord. O house of Levi, bless the Lord. You that fear the Lord, bless the Lord. Blessed be the Lord from Zion, he who resides in Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. Let us pray. Eternal God, we praise you that your glory has dawned on us and brought us into this season of resurrection. We rejoice that the grave could not hold your son and that he has conquered death, risen to rule over all powers of the earth. We praise you that he summons us into new life to follow him with joy and gladness. By your spirit, Lift us from doubt and despair and set our feet in Christ's holy way, that our lives may be signs of his life and all we have may show forth his love. Praise, glory, and thanksgiving to you, our God, forever and ever. Amen. Our Old Testament reading today comes from the prophet Daniel, chapter 3, verses 1 through 30 from the Common English Bible. Listen for God's word. King Nebuchadnezzar made a gold statue. It was 90 feet high and nine feet wide. He set it up in the Dura Valley in the province of Babylon. King Nebuchadnezzar then ordered the chief administrators, ministers, governors, counselors, treasurers, judges, magistrates, and all the provincial officials to assemble and come for the dedication of the statue that he had set up. So the chief administrators, ministers, governors, counselors, treasurers, judges, magistrates, and all the provincial officials assembled for the dedication of the statue that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. They stood in front of the statue the king had set up. The herald proclaimed loudly, peoples, nations, and languages, this is what you must do. When you hear the sound of the horn, pipe, zither, lyre, harp, flute, and every kind of instrument, you must bow down 
and to worship the gold statue that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. Anyone who will not bow down and worship will be immediately thrown into a furnace of flaming fire. So, because of this order, as soon as they heard the sound of the horn, pipe, zither, harp, lyre, flute, and every kind of instrument, all the peoples, nations, and languages bowed down and worshipped the gold statue that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. At that moment, some Chaldeans came forward, seizing a chance to attack the Jews. They said to King Nebuchadnezzar, Long live the king! Your majesty, you gave a command that everyone who hears the sound of the horn, pipe, zither, lyre, harp, flute, and every kind of instrument should bow down and worship the gold statue. Anyone who wouldn't bow down and worship would be thrown into a furnace of flaming fire. Now there are some Jews, ones you appointed to administer the province of Babylon, specifically Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who have ignored your command. They don't serve your gods, and they don't worship the gold statue you've set up. In a violent rage, Nebuchadnezzar ordered them to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They were brought before the king. Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, is it true that you don't serve my gods or worship the gold statue I've set up? If you are now ready to do so, bow down and worship the gold statue I've made. When you hear the sound of horn, pipe, zither, lyre, harp, flute, and every kind of instrument. But if you won't worship it, you will be thrown straight into the furnace of flaming fire. Then what God will rescue you from my power? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered King Nebuchadnezzar, We don't need to answer your question. If our God, the one we serve, is able to rescue us from the furnace of flaming fire and from your power, your majesty then let him rescue us. But if he doesn't, know this for certain, your majesty. We will never serve your gods or worship the gold statue that you set up. Nebuchadnezzar was filled with rage, and his face twisted beyond recognition because of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. In response, he commanded that the furnace be heated to seven times its normal heat. He told some of the strongest men in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and throw them into the furnace of flaming fire. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were bound, still dressed in all their clothes, and thrown into the furnace of flaming fire. Now the king's command had been rash, and the furnace was heated to such an extreme heat that the fire's flame killed the very men who carried Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell bound into the furnace of flaming fire. Then King Nebuchadnezzar jumped up in shock and said to his associates, didn't we throw three men bound into the fire? They answered the king, certainly, your majesty. He replied, look, I see four men unbound walking around inside the fire and they aren't hurt. And the fourth one looks like one of the gods. Nebuchadnezzar went near the opening of the furnace of flaming fire and said, Shadrach, 
Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out. Come here. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out of the fire. The chief administrators, ministers, governors, and the king's associates crowded around to look at them. The fire hadn't done anything to them. Their hair wasn't singed. Their garments looked the same as before. They didn't even smell like fire. Nebuchadnezzar declared, May the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be praised. He sent his messenger to rescue his servants who trusted him. They ignored the king's order, sacrificing their bodies because they wouldn't serve or worship any god but their god. I now issue a decree to every people, nation, and language. Whoever speaks disrespectfully about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego's god will be torn limb from limb, and their house will be made a trash heap, because there is no other god who can rescue like this. Then the king made Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego prosperous in the province of Babylon. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were willing to go to their deaths by burning. They sacrificed their own bodies rather than to worship another god. If you were in their position, do you think you'd do the same? Our New Testament reading today comes from 1 John chapter 2, verses 3 through 11 from the Common English Bible. Listen again for God's word to us. This is how we know that we know him, if we keep his commandments. The one who claims, I know him, while not keeping his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in that person. But the love of God is truly perfected in whoever keeps his word. This is how we know we are in him. The one who claims to remain in him ought to live in the same way as he lived. Dear friends, I'm not writing a new commandment to you, but an old commandment that you had from the beginning. The old commandment is the message you heard. On the other hand, I am writing a new commandment to you, which is true in him and in you, because the darkness is passing away and the true light already shines. The one who claims to be in the light while hating a brother or sister is in the darkness, even now. The person loving a brother and sister stays in the light and there is nothing in the light that causes a person to stumble. But the person who hates a brother or sister is in the darkness and lives in the darkness and doesn't know where to go because the darkness blinds the eyes. Friends, this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The author says that we cannot hate another person and also claim to be a follower of Christ. But what about the really, really bad people? Can we hate them? Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, you created all things in wonderful beauty and order. 
Help us now to perceive how still more wonderful is the new creation by which in the fullness of time you redeemed your people through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Friends, may the God who shakes heaven and earth, whose spirit blows through the valleys and hills, whom death could not contain, and who lives to disturb and bring us life, bless you with the power to endure, to hope, and to love. Go in peace. I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you.